Hey guys, have you ever wanted to drive a seven segment display on an FPGA development board via Verilog? In this video, we'll take all the previous videos and tie them together in order to be able to drive the seven segment display on a basis two board. So let's get started. So what you see here is the structure of how this program wound up coming together. Um, what we've done, we've built a BCD converter that you've seen in the previous video. And then we've tied that together with some other segments here. So we've got a, a multi-segment driver since we have multiple seven segment displays tied together to do four different digits. And then below that, we've got a decoder that will just decode per seven segment display. And then just to show that we can drive this and have some sort of example show up on our seven segment display, we've built a, an example counter and we've tied all that together via a top module. And from that top module are the inputs and outputs to drive the actual seven segment display. So we're gonna start from the bottom here and we'll move up and over to be able to understand all of the modules. And then we'll look at how to tie them together. And then ultimately I'll show you this working on the basis to FPGA board. So the first thing we want to look at is the seven segment decode program. And what I do in this program is I basically just take the BCD code one section or one segment at a time, which is four bits. I pass that into the decoder. We decode it and turn it into the actual code that we need to drive the cathodes of the seven segment display. So let's go ahead and dive into that code. Now this code is actually quite simple. It's just a decoder, right? So all we're doing with this is we're bringing in an input, which is our clock then an input, which is three down to zero of BCD. So it's going to be four bits for each segment, right? And then we're going to output a seven segment code to drive the actual cathodes of the seven segment display. From there, we just set up a register, uh, SSEG, which is just going to hold our cathode code, right? So just the, the eight bits that we need to drive the cathodes for all the segments of the display. Now from there we go down and, and we just set up a decode table, which is pretty simple. Always at the positive edge of the clock. I'm gonna look at the code BCD and if it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, I'm gonna turn it into its respective code that will drive the cathodes. And if it's none of these, I'm gonna just turn all the cathodes off. Now, if you watched the previous video where I described how to decode, we came up with these codes here, which are the right codes, but the order is reversed for the basis too. So when we look at the constraints file, we look down here and we see that segment seven is for the period. And on up, you got G, F, E, D, C, B, A, where it goes down to zero. So all I did in SSD code is to reverse the order of all the bits. Now, if you're working with system Verilog, there's actually a very easy way to reverse all those bits just down here. But I want this code to be complete and runnable in just Verilog. So I just went ahead and reversed it here. So to kind of get an example, if three comes through on BCD, it goes down here and it pulls three on every clock and it'll pass this code back out to SSEG. And then at the end, of course, here, all we do is assign SSEG to SSEG out, right? So that goes to the output here. And then we end the module. So this decode module is very simple and effective. So now if we pull back out of the SS decoder, we're driving that module with the multi-segment driver here. So let's look at that code. So with the multi-segment driver, to start out, of course, we set up our module. We've got our inputs, we've got clock. We're gonna bring a BCD code in, which is gonna be passed down. But this BCD code is the full 16 bits here. And then from here, we're just gonna output our anode code and our cathode code. So this module actually gives us our anode code or what anode we're gonna be tapping into. And then we pulled the cathode code from SSD code. So to start here, one thing that I ran into is ghosting on the seven segment display. So what you actually have to do, you have to drive the anode and then you turn on the cathodes for just a short amount of time. And then you turn off the cathodes again and leave the anode driven. And that keeps any residual current from keeping the LEDs lit up and or lighting up the next pattern. So I set up some parameters here for the size of a ghosting timer and the size of the timer that we want to just drive the cathodes, which will be a part of this full ghost timer. So we'll see more about that here in just a second. So now we set up a wire for seven seg and three regs. We have anode, BCD segment, and G count. Now the seven segment wire is needed when we instantiate this SSD code. 
code here, which was the module we just looked at. So what we're doing, we're instantiating this and giving it a name, ssdec, and then we're going to pass our clock directly to that. And we've made a register for the BCD segment that we're going to be looking at to pass to it. And then we have a wire, which is ssseg out, that's going to come out of this and ultimately attach to our output from the multiseg driver here. So that's instantiating this SSD code. Now we need to drive the stuff that makes this thing work. So we set up an always at block here that's going to watch the positive edge. And anytime we see a positive edge on clock, we're going to look at G count, which is this register up here, which we've set as the size of GS down to zero. We'll take that G count and add one to it. So we're just incrementing G count every time we go through this. So basically every time a clock signal happens. Now we want the anode to always be driven. So what we're going to do, we're going to cycle through this anode one code at a time. And every single time we'll set the segment to be driven as a different segment, right? So we'll just filter through the segments one at a time. We'll do the left one, one over, one over, one over, and then the left one again. So this is just done to catch that bit and flop it back over to the other side. So if we've gotten to the last LED here, what we want to do is move it to the first LED. Otherwise, we just want to move it over by one. So this will take this one and move it over one, and then over one, and then over one, and then it'll flip it back around and put it back on the other side here. Now we'll see here in a second how this was erroneous just due to our basis two board and the way that's driven. So from here, now we have the actual anode. So we're picking which seven segment of the full four digit display we want to display on. So now that we know that we can say, well, we want to display this part of our BCD on that segment. So all we're doing in here is, is that exactly. Um, but the first thing we want to do is take care of the ghosting. So with this statement here, if and G count GS minus one, so the full size of the ghost counter only down to GT for that, I'm saying if all of those are ones, we want to do this. Otherwise, let's do this down here, which is just to turn all of the cathodes off here. So that essentially gives us a variable length timing where we can have this on or off as long as we want it to be on or off. The top down to GT is all ones. What we're going to do is go in and say case on anode. So we're looking at what is our pattern, which one of these are we lighting up? And then we say we want to take that and we want to take the BCD code for that pattern and pass that through to BCD seg, which is actually run into our instantiated module up here. And that'll decode that and bring it out on SSEG0. So we do that for each and every segment one at a time. And then we also leave a default code down here for turning all of these off just in case we want to turn them off in a different way. So from there, all we do is go in and assign our anode out to be not anode. So we turn this around because if you look at the actual diagram of how the basis two works, there's actually a PMP transistor there. So you want to turn it off in order to let the current flow through. So we can basically stick with the same idea, only we just negate each and every bit in that pattern there. And then we pass out our cathode side, which is just a direct pass, which actually comes from the instantiated module up here and then we end our module. So all of that gets passed up to top. So let's go back and look at our diagram. So all of that just basically gets passed up to the top as anode and cathode or AN three down to zero and cathode seven down to zero. And those are really all the new modules that we have here sans how we're driving this thing. But let's go ahead and go down and look at the BCD converter that we looked at in a previous video to make a few clarifications. I'll link the previous video down below so you can check it out if you wanna see the full details of the code. But let's look at that code right now. So the code that we brought out in the last video, I've only added a few things really mainly for clarification here. So all I really did here was add a counter for the add states, right? So instead of doing it all at one time, I just do the add shift separately, right? So instead of checking all of these at once and saying, if this is greater than, and if this is greater than, and if this is greater than, and if this is greater than, then go ahead and add, and then we'll move to shift. Instead of doing that, I do it once at a time. So I'll check, is this greater than, then I'll give it a clock cycle and check the next one. And then another clock cycle and check the next one. So really that's the only way this code changed and that's reflected in my GitHub. So if you download that code, you should have no problems with this. And the simulator for the previous code as well as this code shows the same results even at all the edges. So after quickly covering that, let's go back to our diagram. So backing up out of the BCD converter, that's where we got the actual BCD that we needed to drive the first two segments that we talked about. And really from here, we have a full driver that will drive the full basis to seven segment, but to show it off, we need to feed it some actual numbers. So I made an example module that we can use to drive this thing. Let's go look at that code now. So with the example count module, all I really wanted to be able to do was to count upwards from zero as fast or as slow as I wanted to. So we start out the module and we just bring in a clock 
We have an output to say when it's done doing its thing, and then we have an actual count that comes out. So the first thing you see here is a parameter which sets the size of our counter register, but ultimately sets our timing on this thing. From there, I just set up a register for count, which is the size of C reg up here. Then I set up a register for fin and a register for the old last bit in the code, and we'll see kind of how we work with those here. So I've got an always loop. Every time a positive edge on the clock happens, I begin. I'm gonna set start by increasing the count every single time. Then I set up a check here to see if the very last binary number in our register has changed from a one to a zero or a zero to one. So our old B here is actually gonna hold the bit at the very end from the last cycle. So we say, was the very last bit a one and is now a zero? Or was the very last bit a zero and is now a one? That means that it's changing, right? So I'm just watching the edges of this register here. So if that's the case, if we get a transition, then we just wanna say that we're finished, right? If there is no transition, then we don't wanna say that we're finished. And what we're basically doing is signaling anything outside of this document that the new count is ready when the very last bit of this register is changed. And we'll see kind of why we need that when we look at the top module. So at the very end of the document here, we just set our bin count or what's coming out of it for our actual count to the top 12 bits of our count. And we also assign fin here to be done, which is what we pass out of the module as well. So let's go back to our diagram and let's zoom back out and look at it all. So really all we're doing is passing the binary into the top module and a control to let it know that it's done. So now let's dig into the top module and see how that pulls all these things together and then drives the actual seven segment display. So the top module here is actually pretty simple. We set it up by bringing in M clock, which is a part of our UCF for the basis two. Then we set up an output for the cathodes on our segments and we set up an output for the anodes on our segments and that's really all the inputs and outputs that we need for this so we set up a register for stat bcd which we'll look at and a bunch of wires which are a part of these modules and instantiations so the first code that i instantiated is the example counter uh, I just bring M clock in as clock. I bring done out as E in, and I'm going to put that as a wire. I bring the binary count out as B D in, and I make that as a wire. And then I bring ready out as R D Y. And that's really it for that one. So now we have our binary coming out of that. We made it into a wire, so now we can pass it directly into our BCD converter. So with the BCD converter, we just pass M clock in. We pass E in, which came from example count. So when example count is done with what it's doing, or it gets to the next bit, we pass that over to BCD convert. So that it really only has to convert that once. Then we have our bin D in, which is actually our wire up here. It's just going to pass directly from example count into our BCD converter. And then we have bin D out, which is a wire here that we're going to use actually for this always block down here. So with this always block, I just want to kind of make a static code of stat BCD so that I can continually look at that code and run the multi-segment drive through there so the multi-seg driver doesn't have to stop at any point no matter what the BD out on BD convert is doing so all I do is I bring that in here and I look at the M clock if there's a positive edge which is basically always happening anytime anything happens in here if ready if this is ready and done with its code then I just want to take BCD out which came out of here into stat BCD so that means that stat BCD will just be what the exact code is and should be all the time Anytime this guy is ready, it'll switch. Now that's really all the logic that I have going on in the top module. From there, I instantiate the multi-seg drive, which I just bring in M clock. I bring in the actual BCD code, which is stat BCD. And then I put out AM, which is our anode code, and SEG, which is our cathode code that we talked about previously. And you'll notice that these are the exact same names as our outputs up here. And we were able to do that because we set these as wires. One last thing to notice is that this SEG, AN, and MLK, because they're on our top module and they're ultimately going out to the basis two, they're going to be in our constraints file as well. So if you look up here, M clock comes from our actual clock on board. Seg comes from our cathodes for each of the parts of the display. And AN comes from our anodes for each display. So in the constraints file, all I did was take out the commenting hash in front of those codes. So that's basically how we drive this thing. Let's go ahead and do a quick review of our diagram before we upload this to the FPGA. So in review, all we do is pass a count from example counter into BCD converter. We convert that into BCD and pass that to multi-segment driver. From multi-segment driver, we decode the BCD for each segment of the seven segment display and we pass that back. And then we pass all of that back to the top module, including our anode code. So now we have our anode and our cathode code and we take those and put those right out to the seven segment display. Let me take you over to my Linux box and we'll quickly upload this code and see if it works. Okay guys, so I've got OBS open now. 
and I've already pulled all the code in, but for those of you who haven't watched my other videos, and you should, I mean, you should, but all I did really was just go in here, and you can copy from my GitHub and put it in here, or you can say, download the entire thing from my GitHub, just go to project, add source, and then you want to pull in each document. So you pull in top V, BCD convert, example count, multi-seg, SSD code, and make sure that you pull in the constraints file as well. So basically just pull in everything but the readme from GitHub, then save it all and you should see a tree like this. If you don't, comment down below and I'll see if I can help you out. Now from there, what you wind up doing is go to your generate programming down here, make sure you're clicked on top, right click on generate programming, go to process properties. And if you're running this directly off of JTAG and you don't expect to run it in standalone mode, which we've gone over in some of my other videos, you'll go down to startup options and make sure that this says JTAG clock. Click okay, make sure that it's applied, and then just go ahead and generate your programming. I'll let that generate, then I'll bring you back and we'll upload it and watch it go. Okay, so now that that's done generating, I'll go ahead and make a new terminal. And then I wanna type in this code, which you can find down below and I'll just hit enter, and that'll tell me what boards I have hooked up. Now that I know I have the basis two and I had the device name, I'll go ahead and put in this code and hit enter. And as we've talked about before, you see the two devices on there. One is for uploading to the FPGA and one is for programming the actual board in standalone mode. Now I've got that, I wanna find my file path and my file path here is home Joshua SSEG, make sure that's the name of your project, forward slash top dot bit. That's where my actual bit file is. And all I'm doing here is programming the basis, the zero device, which means I'm gonna do this via JTAG. If you upload it to the board, you need to make sure your clock reflects that. So let's go ahead and hit enter and watch what happens with the board. Now I've got this counting super fast just because I was testing it out to see that it would make it all the way through without any issues. So there you go, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. If you just wanna give me encouragement, you can do that as well. If you like this video, subscribe, go check out some of my other videos, hit that like button, have a great day, and don't forget to love well.